Hello, pre-calculus students. This is Miss Robinson, and we will be recording section 4.5 in your notes today. So go ahead and flip open to section 4.5. This is called the graph of a rational function. So we will be graphing rational functions, and as our next title tells us, we will be analyzing the graph of a rational function. So when we analyze a graph of a rational function, we want to make sure that we follow specific steps so that we don't miss anything. So the steps we should be following are step one, factor the numerator and denominator of your rational function. Find the domain of the rational function. Basic things, we know how to do this. Step two, we should be writing our rational function in its lowest terms, so simplifying wherever possible. Step three, we want to locate the intercepts, x or y, of the graph. Step four, locate the vertical asymptotes. We've done this before, and we know that we can find these using what we did in the first step with finding that domain. Okay, so fairly simple. Step five, locate the horizontal or oblique asymptotes. We've done this before. Determine points, if any, at which the graph of the rational function intersects these asymptotes. We will see how to do this. Step six, we are to graph the rational function using a graphing utility, just plugging it into the calculator, seeing what happens. Step seven, use the results obtained in steps one through six to graph the rational function by hand. So we can use all of that information we have from earlier to actually graph it using our own abilities, not using the graphing calculator. Okay, so seven steps to apply to analyzing the graph of a rational function. Okay, these don't mean much until we apply them. So let's move on to example one, we, where we are actually going to apply these steps. Okay, so for A, our rational function is x squared plus 3x plus 2, all divided by x. Okay, and let's dig in with those steps. So if we look back at step one, we need to factor the, nu factor the numerator and the denominator of the rational function. Okay, so step one, we want to factor. So if we look at the numerator, we see that we know two times one gives us two, two plus one gives us three, so our factors are x, plus 2, and x plus 1 for that numerator. Can't do anything for the denominator, so we're just left with x. So we can rewrite our rational function as x plus 2 times x plus 1, all divided by x. But that's not all for step 1. Step 1 also asks us to find the domain of the rational function. Okay. So we know that when we find the domain of a rational function, we're finding where x cannot have a value, or we have issues for our x, and we see that our denominator gives us an issue for x at x equals zero. So we would say all x, where x cannot equal zero. If we also want to write this in interval notation, we could write negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. Same idea, either one works. We want to practice both. So that's it for step one. We factored where we could and then found the domain. Let's look at step two of analyzing a rational function. So if we go to step two, this is to write our rational function in lowest terms. So we want to look back at a rational function, see if we can simplify it all. We see here that no, there's nothing I can cancel out, nothing I can simplify. So my rational function will remain in this form as its simplified form, its lowest terms, x plus 2 times x plus 1 all over x. Not much on this function to do for step 2. Step 3 asks us to locate the intercepts of the graph. So moving on to step 3, let's look at our x-intercepts. So x-intercepts where y equals 0, we know that y equals 0 when we have zeros of our numerator, so we can see that x plus 2 would give us the zero of 
x equals negative 2 on our numerator. And then x plus 1 would give us a 0 of x equals negative 1 for our numerator. Okay, So we have zeros at x equals negative 2 and negative 1. Moving on to our y-intercepts. We know our y-intercepts are where x equals 0. But we saw earlier that we have an issue at x equals 0 in our domain. So if we were to plug in 0 for x, we would have an undefined solution. So there are no y-intercepts. None. Okay. Step 4. Okay, moving on to step 4. Step 4 asks us to locate the vertical asymptotes. When we were finding vertical asymptotes earlier, we realized that our vertical asymptotes are where we have issues in our domain, where our x values are non-existent or cannot be plugged in. So we would say that our vertical asymptote for this function, where I have my issue for my domain, is at x equals 0. So I would write my vertical asymptote is at x equals 0. Now we need to remember and be careful that the vertical asymptote is not just 0. It is the function, or the equation, x equals 0. It's a line, not a number. Okay, So be very careful that you include that x equals. All right? Good. That's our only vertical asymptote, because that's our only problem for x. Let's move on to step 5. Now, step 5 asks us to first locate the horizontal or oblique asymptotes. So horizontal or oblique asymptotes. If we remember about our horizontal and oblique asymptotes, we would remember that if we have an improper fraction where our numerator is of equal degree or larger degree than our denominator, then we need to divide to find our horizontal or oblique asymptotes. We see here that in our function, the numerator has a greater degree than the denominator, so we will need to divide. Okay. Now there's a couple of different ways you can divide this one. I'm going to show you long division as the most basic way first, and then we'll talk about how we could do that a little differently later. So if we take x squared plus 3x plus 2 as our dividend and x as our divisor, x goes into x squared, x times, x times x gives us x squared. Subtract, cancels out of course, bring down 3x plus 2. x goes into 3x three times, x times 3 is 3x, and I subtract that. Those cancel, I'm left with 2. x does not go into 2 whatsoever, so I have a remainder of 2 which we know is the same as 2 divided by our dividend, x. So here's our long division way. Now this particular instance is unique in that our divisor, our denominator here, is only one term. As it is only one term, we could do it a little differently. We could take x squared plus 3x plus 2, divide it by x, and then take each term individually and divide that by that denominator. Kay. We would see that we get x squared divided by x is x, 3x divided by x is 3, plus 2 over x, which was our remainder before. Okay, So two different ways we can divide this particular instance. Only if our denominator is a monomial, does this method work over here? Kay. Now if we go back to our horizontal and oblique asymptotes, we remember that our either horizontal or oblique asymptote is our quotient after we divided that x plus 3. Now if it is a linear function, x plus 3, then we know it is an oblique asymptote at y equals x plus 3. Because we have that oblique asymptote, we do not have a horizontal asymptote. Kay. Now there was a second part to step 5. Step 5 also asks us to determine points at which the graph of R intersects these asymptotes. 
So we need to think about this oblique asymptote and what it means. So this oblique asymptote is telling me that any place where y equals x plus 3, my function cannot cross. So y cannot equal x plus 3. But we learned before that it is possible for my function to cross an oblique or horizontal asymptote at different parts in my function. So in one area it may not cross, but in another area it might. So we need to actually mathematically plug this in and test it. Okay. So right now we're at the assumption that y cannot equal x plus 3. To see if there's a moment where it does equal that, we would replace our function r of x with the y value we have here, x plus 3. So I would say that x plus 3 equals x plus 2 times x plus 1 over x. So I'm just seeing if there's any moment where these two equations, these two functions, are equivalent. Okay. In order to solve this problem, I need to get rid of anything that's on my denominator. So here I have an x. In order to get rid of that x, I need to multiply both sides by x. So this x will cancel. I'm left with x plus 2 times x plus 1. And on this side, I can just distribute my x, x squared plus 3x. Okay. We know from earlier that this multiplied out is really just the original numerator I had, x squared plus 3x plus 2. And then we can start to combine like terms. So I know if I were to subtract these x squareds, they would cancel. If I were to subtract these 3x's, they would also cancel. Over here, I'm left with nothing, 0. And over here, I'm left with 2. We know that 0 will never equal 2. It's not going to happen. So I can tell right here that there will be no instance where my function intersects this oblique asymptote. So it's never going to cross over my oblique asymptote. It'll help us graph later. All right. So that's my step five. Let's move on to step six. So step six asks me to graph my rational function using a graphing utility. Okay. For step six, we won't be writing much down. However, we will need to write down like we usually do our x min and x max and our y min and y max. Okay, so we can keep track of this window that we're going to be using. Okay, so let's take out our calculators, turn them on, okay. and then let's plot our function. It's always best to go with your original rational function rather than any factored out version because you want to see what it would look like if you just plugged it straight into your calculator, it's also a great way to test the work that you've done. So maybe if you factored incorrectly, you will see it after you graph your function in its original form. Okay. If your work matches up with what the idea of your function is on your paper, with what you get in your graphing calculator, granted you plug it in correctly, then you're also checking your work. Okay. So let's go ahead and plug this in. We need to be careful with parentheses whenever we're dividing. So make sure you put parentheses around that entire numerator. So we're going to have x squared plus 3x plus 2 divided by x. Okay. Let's graph it. Okay. Seems to be a pretty good window as of right now. I might move it around a little bit decrease my x range here. So actually let's go with a negative 5 to 5 and see if that changes anything. Okay, Just zoom in a little on my function. I want to still keep the y window because I want to be able to see this break right here. So let's go with that window that we have right here. x min at negative 5, x max at 5 x min at negative 10, x max at 10. We get this nice graph that we can see here. And 
let's consider for a moment these asymptotes that we had. So we had an asymptote at x equals 0. That seems to be reflected in my graph. It doesn't seem like my function is crossing my y-axis at all. We also said that we have a, an oblique asymptote at y equals x plus 3. Now, interesting way to check this if you want to is to actually plug in that function, x plus 3. And then if you want to make your function slightly different in order to be able to tell the difference, you can always change the line that you have. So if you move over to be in front of your y2, you could change the type of line that you're drawing. So I like to go with the dotted line for the asymptotes. We graph this. And that's showing me my asymptote right there, my oblique asymptote, y equals x plus 3. And it does seem, from what I'm seeing right here, that it is not crossing that asymptote. If I want to check that further, I might zoom out on my window to really see if that crosses or not. But so far it seems like what we've been checking is correct. Alright, so we've graphed it. Step 6. Let's move on to step 7. So step 7, if we look up here, asks us to use the results obtained in steps 1 through 6 to graph the rational function by hand. So we're going to use that information from before and we're going to draw a graph. Now if you have graph paper, this is probably a very good time to get it out. Maybe attach it to what you have already. All right. Otherwise, we could just make a grid. So let's go through all of our information. So we start at the top. Rational function, domain we know cannot equal 0. Okay. Then we get to x-intercepts at negative 2 and negative 1. So I can plot those right now. Negative 1, negative 2. And I want to label those, of course. All right. So, first bit of information used. Next, we see that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. So we want to show that on here. The vertical asymptote at x equals 0 is usually a little bit difficult because we have that axis already that makes it difficult to show the dotted line. But right next to it is sufficient. A vertical asymptote. Now we have oblique asymptote at y equals x plus 3. So we're going to plot our y-intercept at 3 and then we can just use our slope up 1 over 1 to graph that line. And again we're making this dotted. Okay, And we have our in our asymptote, oblique asymptote, at y equals x plus 3. All right. Now, we know that we have a graph on either side of this asymptote right here, right? On this side, I either have positive or negative values, and on this side, I either have positive or negative values. Now if we go to the left, we know that there are no x-intercepts over here. So automatically I know that my graph is not going to be on this side because it cannot cross this axis over here. Okay, I don't have any intercepts. So somewhere up here, I will find my graph. And then if I move over here, I know I have intercepts here and here. So on this side of the graph, my graph must belong down here. Kay. And then I can always plug in values to check my work. We also know from earlier that our graphs should look something like this once we're done. Kay. I think my y equals x plus 3 is a little bit steeper than it should be because my graph is not exactly accurate with my tick marks. And that's what happens when you make your own grid. Okay. When we do step 7, we need to be very careful that we are labeling everything. So we're labeling our asymptotes. 
x equals 0, y equals x plus 3. We're labeling our intercepts, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 0, and any other points we end up using along the way. Say if we have a y-intercept, or simply points that we're plugging in to check. Okay, so really make sure you're labeling that step 7. That's it for A on example 1. Stay tuned for B. Thank you.